I don't even know where to begin, how to begin, how to get into all these topics, how to talk. Oh my goodness. My cat jumped from Leslie's holding table to my bed and it slid. Um, hello kitty. I haven't uploaded in two months and um, a lot of things have happened, came to the surface, realizations, um, updates, just life. You know, a lot of things have happened. So I want to talk about it all and I want to be realistic with you guys. I want to have this as a new beginning, a new start almost. Um, and um, I'm ready for this. It's taken me a lot. It's actually, and I will get into all of this, but it's taken me a lot to even just get to a place where I'm fully comfortable and set these boundaries. Um, also life through a major um, curveball to my family and it really put, I don't want to cry. It really put life into perspective and it has in the past couple months for me. And I don't know, I think it's just me also just growing up. I think it's, um, me really loving myself even more, but diving deeper into who I am and just realizing the importance of the things that are important to me. Um, so anyways, I'm just gonna jump right into it. Um, Leslie's actually at Auntie's tonight and I don't get a break. So um, I'm just gonna eat my Ruffles chips because I've been craving these. No, I'm not pregnant. And every single night I've been making chocolate chip cookies. Um, this is my grandma's recipe and they are just so delicious. And I literally make a batch and then I put the dough in the fridge and I take a few chunks out when I wanna make a cookie every night. I'll eat like, all oh, these cats are gonna fight. Uh, I'll make like two cookies every night and it's delicious and it's magical and it's everything I ever want in life. So anyways, eat some cookies, eat some chips, drink my water and um, you never know, I should be cracking open some wine or a beer at this point, but we're just, we're on a health kick lately. Um, besides meeting junk food right now, we'll get all into this. Okay, so I'm also just, realistically, I also am wearing track pants with this nice shirt. So anyways, okay, didn't do my hair. I just, I don't, I'm not gonna get full glam for these, for this video. I don't have energy on time, you know, homeschooling still happening, online learning, we're still in lockdown in Ontario. <sighs> Life, okay, let's get into it. So I honestly just filmed this whole story and then I was like just super emotional and rambly. So I'm sorry if this is all mumbo jumbo, but I'm trying to be, I almost just cried too. I'm trying to be real and take you guys through this because I only gave a few, I only gave like the, tidbits on Instagram, but I didn't give the whole in-depth story about what exactly happened at each individual spot. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, that's where you get more updates on this situation. But, um, my dad fell out of his work truck at work, obviously. Um, and he fell four to five feet out and landed on his elbow. So, I'm gonna kind of tell a story and then give you guys more detail going back and then we'll move forward and then we'll go back because I just want to give the most detail but I also don't want to leave out like the important story time moments. So he fell out of his work truck, he landed on his elbow and initially we thought he just broke his elbow. This is key. But he stood up again and he passed out and he stood up again and he passed out. And I don't know who is looking over him, but each time he passed out, it was for a long time. And I'm very thankful that he woke up um, because he could have easily just passed out or hit his head really hard. Thankfully he didn't and he woke up. Um, so anyways, just that thought really just puts life into in perspective but um anyways so um 
he got in his work truck, he called work, they called the ambulance. I say that's so weird. Ambulance to come. And during this time, um, by the way, his work never called us, which really irked me to my core. All besides the point, because whoever was looking out for him was clearly looking out for me, and I just put my full trust and faith into the universe um, for this, because conveniently, I was going through the Starbucks drive-thru, and my car died. In Starbucks drive-thru, the battery died, my car shut down. I'll quickly just say, I called Starbucks, that the girls working at Starbucks pushed my car out, a young girl boosted me, and I drove home, my car died the second I got home, besides the point. So... Um, normally I would call my dad the second that my car died or it acts up and I'm thankful that I didn't. I knew how to control the situation with my car and get through it, but I just didn't call him until I got home. And I'm very thankful for that because he wouldn't have answered and that would have made me worry more because if he doesn't answer me right away or he hasn't called me back in five minutes, I start to worry. That's just how I am. I'm a worry wart. It's, it's my... It's my mom and instincts to worry about everyone in my family. Um, that's just how I am. So I got home and I called my dad and right away I was bitching about my car and how I wanted a new one. I can't rely on my car. And I don't know why I didn't realize that he wasn't in his truck because it wasn't super loud and normally it is. But I didn't realize and he just calmly is like, Abigail, I fell out of my truck and I broke my elbow. And right away I'm like, oh my God, holy shit, are you okay? And for a grown man to say, no, I'm not okay, is, and it's okay for men not to be okay and it's okay for them to show emotions, but for my dad to say that he's not okay was like really shocking to me. Um, and right away I started freaking out, having anxiety and I text my family group chat right away like my sisters and this is also just another thing why family is so important to me that's why also life has just really shown me that is right away we're like look like who can get off work we came where is he we're gonna drive out there we're calling like right away we're like a unit and we are immediately like how do we get to him what can we do how can we get there faster and i didn't know what to say to my dad I didn't know where like to ask where he was because he's a truck driver he drives all around so my sister calls him we find out that he's an hour and a bit away and where he is we don't know what hospital he's gonna be transferred to so thankfully we knew someone that knew someone that lived in that area so we were able to find out what the closest biggest hospital was cool beans awesome great so immediately I go inside I'm freaking out um and I call my friend because I just, I need her to like calm me down, talk me through it. And everyone's like, everyone's just like, oh, it's just, he just broke his elbow. He didn't just break his elbow, you guys. He didn't just break his elbow. This is Archie. We got a new cat if you guys don't know. So anyways, we, me and my sister drive out to the hospital where he was at. And we call them. We're like, hey, my dad was just transferred here in an ambulance. Is he there? We didn't even know he was there. We had no contact with him. They're like, yes, he is. He just, um, he'll, he'll get back to you soon or something like that. I forget what they exactly said, besides the point. Um, and during these times, people would probably be like, well, why didn't you pull up the camera and vlog it? When stuff like this happens, which I'll get into, I choose not to pull up the camera as much as this is like great quality footage. I choose not to because my first reaction is, is my father okay? Is my family okay? What can I do? What can we do? Where can we go? How can we help? And this is during COVID. We're also in a lockdown in Ontario. So we couldn't go into the hospital, which means we couldn't see my dad, which means we had very little contact. And it was even harder because the next two days, me and my sisters, we were like, our stomachs were in knots. We couldn't really eat. I'm calling the hospital every chance I can. And it was really scary. So anyways, my dad calls us and says, they're just waiting for an X-ray. At this point, we find out that he has multiple fractures. And that would be all fine and dandy. One to, like 100%, they'll, all that. We also find out he dislocated his elbow. I'll put an x-ray of what it looked like. It was one of the worst dislocations and fractures that this surgeon has ever seen. 
that's saying something. So right away when he, my dad gets in the ambulance, they give him morphine because for he was in so much pain. His elbow was literally, so it's supposed to be connected here. It was here. Yes. And we didn't find out till weeks later that every single tendon and nerve that went to his fingers was tore completely tore so that same day that he fell he tells us that and then he says you guys need to go home because it's more than likely that i'm going to have surgery my dad has never had surgery never been put under never broken a bone never fractured a bone never okay we also can't go in, go in and see him. We also have no idea what he needs. We also don't know what, exactly where he is in this hospital. We have no idea. He's also on pain medication. So these phone calls that we're getting from him are very sporadic. Um, they're not consistent. They don't make a lot of sense because they're very, a few words at a time. Okay, great. We drive home and I call the hospital for an update and they say he's in surgery. We had no idea when he, would, he went into surgery. We had no idea what the surgery was for because there was three different repairs done to his arm. We had no idea that that, what surgery, what time, when would he be done? Nothing. We get the call later. He's in a lot of pain still and he'll have another surgery the next day. He didn't eat since that morning, so he was starving. Um, so he ate and then the next day, I didn't sleep that night in the next morning his surgery i'm skipping some parts here his surgery was delayed two hours and his surgery ran long so about his surgery was supposed to be like roughly two hours so i called the hospital they said that he's still in for surgery my my, my thinking is he went in on to surgery on time lo and behold he didn't so he wasn't in. he was in his room at this point we didn't hear from him all day so his surgery was delayed. I called the hospital every two hours, like they said, to call every hour, every two hours. Whatever they gave me at that time, I called back, which could sound annoying, but when you have no contact, you have no idea what's happening. Emotions are running high, you're freaking out. You know, you're still trying to balance raising a child, making meals and everything. And she's still worrying about where Papa is. It's really concerning. So anyways, we call, I talked to his nurse. His nurse said that he'll give us a call when he's out of surgery. Great. We talked to my dad. He doesn't even remember calling us because he's so high on, you know, medication, pain medication. He says he's out of surgery. We tell him just to go back to sleep because you could just tell he was very out of it. He calls us the next day. He has to stay for another day in the hospital. This is three days in the hospital, two surgeries in less than 18 hours. Emotions are running high. Emotions are running high. Still don't see my dad. Um, then I get the call, I think it was that Friday, we get the call from him after hours not hearing from him, again saying, I'm ready to be picked up. I literally cried. <laughs> and he cried, and he was just so happy to hear me, and he was like, Abigail, I'm gonna need a lot of help. And I was like, I'm here, I can help you. So I helped my dad. He was in a cast for two weeks and we read through all this paperwork and all that jazz. And, um, it's going to be six months to a year recovery. He dislocated his elbow, three fractures and all of his tendons and nerves were torn. Luckily, everything was repaired. He has a stitch scar here and right here that are six inches long. Two weeks later, we get the cast off, we get x-rays. Oh, and he had a screw put in here. So, um, healing has been good, per se. Like, I've had to help him with everything. Um, we're not even five weeks out. He starts physiotherapy this week, and he does it three times a week. And he will most likely not have full mobility of his arm which I keep putting my left arm, but it's his right arm, which is his dominant arm. Um, so he's off work 
and it was just a really scary thing and it put really life into perspective and it was just you know it was a lot so he's home he's recovering pain five weeks later four and a half weeks later has finally became completely manageable um for the first two weeks i was waking up every um three and a half hours to make sure that he took his pain medication which is just Tylenol um and helping him do everything luckily now he is he has like this he honestly looks like an iron man like this brace um and we go see the surgeon every two weeks for an update now there is bone growing right here which it's not supposed to grow there because you want the tendons and nerves to heal which the tendons and nerves grow a millimeter heal a millimeter a day that's not even a centimeter so it will take a year for him to get healing back in these two fingers because all these nerves were moved um so there's that he's still taking tunnel um the pain for the first two weeks was at um I believe he said like a six, seven, and there were sharp shooting pains all the time. And then now they're a lot better, still sh sharp shooting pains. His hand's super swollen from like gravity with that. He can barely move it. He only has 70% mobility in his arm, which is better than the surgeon thought at four weeks post. Um, the surgeon's amazing, super educational. Um, and intelligent he's really awesome he's confident in his work so anyways that's what happened to my dad and kind of just put life even more into perspective because um you know when something like this happens it really brings your family closer and you really can be more grateful for your health your well-being everything in life um the little things you complain about don't seem as such a big deal. I like, took a step back and I understood how important family was and how just how much I truly appreciate my family and my sisters and how I hold them so close to me. Uh, and that's, it's kind of weird for me to say because I always knew that family was important. My parents have always said this, but... I never, I was like, oh, yeah, 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 it's family. But no, like, I choose to be close with my family and I choose to confide in my sisters. My sisters are my friends. They're not just my sisters. Um, so, I don't know, life just really came into perspective lately. Along with all this, um, again, I've never had surgery, never been um, put under but I'm getting my wisdom teeth removed, which is very expensive, folks. Um, all my wisdom teeth are impacted and growing in fast and furious. Um, so that surgery was actually pushed back. I'm gonna have to go to a surgeon for that. But I'm getting my wisdom teeth removed and I'll be my first time going under, my first time having surgery, completely paying for it myself and um, relying on my family to help me with less sleep because I will be at a commission for 24 hours to 48 hours. These cats, they're not really close friends. So if you hear them, that's what. But um, yeah, so that's what's happening for me. I'll vlog it for you guys, all that jazz, but that's also, you know, been pretty crazy for me, <laughs> but it doesn't sound like it. There's also something really big and exciting that's happening a couple days after that that I happened a few months ago, but now it's like really happening and I'm so excited about it, but um, it almost doesn't feel real and it's such a big accomplishment, but also just, it's the start of a new chapter and it makes me excited, but also extremely nervous. Just where we're at with my dad needing my help and COVID and Leslie, it's exciting, but it's a lot. The next thing I also really want to touch on, which maybe I should have talked about this first, but I hope you guys are still watching, is um, my privacy and YouTube and what I want to share. And if it's anything to do with me, yes, I'm going to share it.
but I'm gonna keep Leslie I feel like I've done this for a while or just a long time I've kept her more private and I'm totally gonna do that if she wants to be in videos yes absolutely um and obviously my everyday revolves around her but um just keeping her a little bit more private um also brings me into the point where I made my Instagram private recently and I made it more and now I opened it up to public because I went through every single Instagram follower um deleted a lot of accounts blocked a lot of accounts and um really just I literally deleted 2,000 followers um I just keep things a little bit more private and hold back a little bit because of course I'm going to share things but I'm not going to be not going to share as much I think you guys have noticed that change in my channel and my change in my Instagram um but yeah I don't I just want to start fresh and I just want to create content that I really truly love and enjoy and that I feel 100% comfortable sharing and have no oh what if feelings or I need to delete this later um so I feel like I've just grown a lot. I'm about to turn 21 and you know, I have a four and a half year old. I've grown a lot, I'm changing and my views on sharing so much about my life have also changed with that. I also think it's a whole bunch of things about like family channels that are coming to the surface on YouTube and exploiting children on social media, which is just, it's, I know that's just, that's, the generation we're in but it's really hard for me to find the happy medium but i've just come to the realization that i just kind of want more privacy with some things and i feel like that's fine um i choose to share my life and who i am but leslie has not made that decision and um keeping her safe and making sure that there's nothing on the internet that she wouldn't want on there one day. So will I record the big moments in her life? Yes, absolutely. But it's gonna be more the day-to-day -day stuff that you guys won't really see all too much. Um, and that's not to say that I'm not always gonna be raw and real and open and honest with you guys. I've always been, I always will. It shows I'm not gonna share as many hard moments with Leslie. Um, there's always going to be meltdowns, there's always going to be hard moments and things, and I might tell you guys a story here and there in a vlog, but it's not going to be showing the, those moments with her, per se. So, anyways, um, I love you guys. I know this was a really long video, but I just wanted to give you an update and, um, talk about where I'm at and how I feel and what I see for my channel in the next couple months years anyways i love you guys i'm gonna go watch some jersey shore some trash television and just eat because i didn't do that in this video <laughs> and relax for the night um i love you guys and i will be vlogging when i get my wisdom teeth out so if you guys have any tips let me know because i'm kind of nervous but we're not gonna tell you in that so anyways i love you guys and i'll see you guys in the next video bye